Okay, so here's the kit. So I ordered this directly from Renogy, and it is a um, an all-inclusive kit. As I mentioned, it is the 300 watt RV solar kit. So obviously, it comes with uh, a total of three 100 watt panels. We'll look at those in a minute. And um, I've had some of this apart, but it comes also with the Adventurer charge controller. There are, hmm, I'm going to call it better or more efficient charge controllers out there for more money, obviously. And uh, But for my purposes, what I'm doing here and what I'm trying to accomplish, which is the recharging of batteries in normal everyday use um, when we're off-grid. So we're not trying to run anything major here. We're talking uh, the LED lights inside the RV, the water pump, maybe a furnace if it's cold. Uh, very, very basic stuff. We're, we're not we're not power hogs when we're in a situation like this. So this is going to be, and I'm not spending the money on, on a bunch of really expensive um, lithium batteries at this point in time either. So being that we're running off of, of just regular old deep cycle lead acid batteries, this makes the most sense for in the here and now. So, as I was saying, we got the panels, we've got the Adventure Charge Controller, we've got our, um, all of our wiring, so our wiring from the panels to the Charge Controller, as well as um, some strands, these two here, which will be from the Charge Controller to the batteries. I don't need nearly that amount of cable, so that's good. We're going to have lots of extra. I think that's... Uh, see it doesn't say I don't remember the gauge I want to say it is 10 or 12 I don't recall um, comes with the rest of the, um, the the base generic solar style um, couplers it does also I skipped over this one comes with the uh, the BT1 Bluetooth module so this will go in line it plugs right into the back of the um, of the charge controller and that'll give me bluetooth capability to monitor um, battery health condition and, and charging what we got going on and then of course a uh, a pass through for the roof you know, so those those guys go in and thread in like that um, we'll use we'll use some uh, you know die core and all the sealants to make that work and uh, and then beyond that, some brackets for the panels. What I added to the kit is a, uh, a battery disconnect. This will be going uh, right next to my other, my regular battery disconnect that disconnects the, the, um, the batteries from the coach. Uh, this will just go right next door to that. And this will allow me to disconnect the panels from the charge controller. So if I don't want this system to be operating, that's what this is going to let me do. And then I have a 30 amp, um, see right there, 30 amp fuse that will go in line in the system as well. That will go between the charge controller and my batteries. So that will be the whole system. So let's check out these panels real quick. So these panels are obviously all, they are ready to install minus the brackets themselves. Um, everything zip tied up. We've got our positive and our negative with the uh, the clamps already on them. So, and you can see these are 100 watt, 24 volt panels. So, I'll show you a little bit about where I am going to make this work. So this is my front compartment. Um, you can see I already have a uh, an onboard charger that's going to this plug, external plug right here. Um, it's wired, you know, it's a it's a, a two bank charger, so it's monitoring both batteries individually, and that is already here mounted in my uh, 
my front compartment of the RV. So we are going to utilize some of this space right in here. I'm not exactly sure where, but that charge controller is going to go here and that gives us a short run down to my batteries. I've got the covers off already, but um, batteries are here and over here, one on each side of the RV. So uh, great access there. And then I'll show you Inside the basement area here, you can see where we have our our battery disconnect for the house batteries. Um, and uh, so we're gonna mount that. I gotta see where everything lays out, but it's gonna be right in this vicinity. Now, coming up right here. Inside the RV, we have a coat closet right here. And as you can see, this coat closet Unlike some of the other cabinetry that doesn't go all the way to the ceiling, this coat closet does. Below the closet is our switch panel and our fuse block. So we have great access all the way down. We'll just have to secure those, those two wires inside of this closet. And, uh, and then if we look in here, this is inside the passenger side of the uh, basement area. And now we are looking right in here. This, all these wires are going over to the fuse block. So once we get in behind underneath that closet, we're into this space under here. And we've got direct access through an existing grommet. And we can zip tie right into that wire pack, which in turn leads us right to this wall which gets into this, into our front uh front storage bay which would be right there and obviously that closet is about a third of the way back on the coach so we are in the realm of where we want to be um to be coming down because I'm going to probably be putting the panels on the on this front portion of the coach. We'll see once we get up there to, to know for sure. Now one thing of note if you're putting this up that I've noticed is first we've got options. So these brackets would sit like this and you've got multiple options along the way at either end to mount these. So I'm not going to, I was, Logic told me I wanted to pre-install everything down here in the barn and I'm not going to do that because I want to try to get these to mount into a um, into a roof truss. So rather than just into plywood, basically, Luan probably. So we're going to just take a Sharpie up with us and lay everything out and get that all to work. And then we'll mark which holes we want to mark. We want to get some junk out of here, packing stuff. Then secondly, another item of note, and I don't love i do have some extra cable so we, we may modify this but what they do is they give you two sets of um two into one Let's see if i can do this with one hand two into one connectors so you know on these two panels i've got my positive and my positive into one that takes me into a second and then we would use a second one and that lets me put panel number three into here and then an outlet here. The problem with that is, is we only have so much room. It's gonna force us to have two next to each other. It really wants them to be all um, end to end. So we may have that option, we may not. I happen to have some extra cable, so I can make that work if I wanna switch things up. You may not be able to, or you might wanna purchase some additional cable um, to allow you to do that. So just keep that in mind. All right, so here's what I've come up with. Um, I am on the roof, and I've got the panels inverted to what I plan on running, but if we look down, my door's right there. I am standing right now. My feet are on top of the closet where that chase is, which works out great. The panels are short enough um, where they can run and end like that, and you can see where my wires are. They are close enough that I can make those connections. And then a short little run of wire somewhere over to right about here, where our, our uh, 
pass through is going to be. So based on that, I think we're good to go. And I'm going to go grab some, I'm just going to grab the rest of the brackets as well as the hardware and some tools. And we'll get this all assembled and wired in together up here. Might as well do it rather than taking the panels back and forth. And then we can get these installed and have the wire loose to head over through into the pass-through. All right, so before we go up, I'll show you everything I've got. I've got all my brackets and hardware that came with the Renogy kit. I've got a Sharpie to mark just in case I need it. I've got uh, my uh, cordless impact, not cordless impact, cordless ratchet. How's that sound? And with a 10 millimeter socket, as well as a 10 millimeter wrench, so all the hardware is 10. Uh, I've got scissors to cut my Eternabond tape. The Eternabond tape is going to go underneath these brackets once we locate them. And then once everything's said and done, we'll go back up with our Dicor lap sealant and seal around all those fasteners as well as around the edge of each and every bracket. Um, but we'll do that another trip. And then I've got my wire with all the, the zip ties clipped off of it. So I think this is everything we need. Let's get back up on the roof. All right, so I've assembled all the brackets onto the, the panels themselves and I verify that the wires all fit. I, I debated on going back to another section. I could, just my OCD, I could lay them all three across, but then I have to do some rewiring and there's just no reason to do that. It works here. And the nice thing I like about them being like this is that I can easily step over this single panel over here. This side is already kind of convoluted with the, the shower skylight and a vent and the AC and the TV antenna. So this way when I'm up here working or washing or whatever, I can easily step over that little 18 inch wide panel. So I think that works the best. So now the trick is we're going to mark these with our Sharpie and uh, then we can cut our, our uh, Eternabond tape, lay that down first, and we'll just zip these these things in and die core them up, make some wire connections, and then we're, we're on to wiring inside the coach. Well, it got a little dark last night working on this, so I'm gonna bring you back and show you what I got done. But there's our, probably caulk that in a little bit up top at some point, but there's our, uh, our 24 volt wires coming down through. Beyond that, they loop behind this panel and down. And then you can see in this compartment, there's the same wires going up into the front bay area and there's that disconnect right next to the main oh, there they are here is our charge controller and you can see she's running right now actively charging i got the bluetooth module hooked up i'm not overly worried about this because i have the charge controller because i have the Bluetooth module so I can read it from my phone. Um, I'll put in some, uh, a couple clips right now that show you what that interface looks like. And then inside here, everything's tucked back together. Batteries are put away. You can see we come down to the, that's the back side of that, uh, that disconnect switch. That's the only thing I've left to do. Um, I'm going to get one of these style of covers that I can just mount over top of that. Um, so we don't have any exposure there. And 
then uh, there's our fuse on the other side of things, outside of the coming back from the charge controller, that's the fuse before it hits the battery. So it is uh, it is functioning and working. And I've got obviously the, the NOCO chargers unplugged right now. I'm testing out the solar for a few days here before I need to rely on it just to see how it works. So we'll get this closed up and overall guys i hope you enjoyed that um so again that is a uh, a 300 watt renergy rv system uh with just a couple extra components that i added in namely the disconnect switch as well as that 30 amp fuse um you know for for all in with those extras i have less than 350 dollars invested into it um i guess by the time you count the the die core sealant and the Eternabond tape it's it's probably a shade over that but uh when we're there less than four hundred dollars all in including every fastener and clamp and you name it and we've got a little bit of um off-grid capability um you're not going to run ac units you're not going to run big stuff off of this type of system but for your basics to let you operate without an outlet for a period of days uh as long as you're you're smart about what you're doing it's going to work so uh i'm really happy really impressed with the energy stuff uh, I have been before. I've got a, a couple other Renergy products and, and always like their stuff. And uh, well packaged, well put together, and well thought out. You can make this obviously be a lot more involved and a lot more high end, but I didn't need that. I didn't want to spend the money on that or put the time into that. So, so for what I spent, I'm really, really happy with what I got. All right, guys, so here we are. We are inside of the fifth wheel. I guess it seemed like a, a good scene for this. It's all closed up. Slides are closed. Um, she's not winterized. We still have one more trip to take with this thing this winter, but, or this fall. You know, the problem with a lot of these videos on things like the solar that we put up here on the roof, the question always arises. People show you how to put it in kind of generically, like I did. They might not go through every detail. I, mean, I showed you some some basics on where I, where I chase things through and how I mounted things. But one part that I think gets missed a lot is the question answered, does it work? So quick little blurb here at the end of the video, just to tell you that we did pull this trailer. We did camp in it with that solar system on it, and we had no hookups for that trip. Um, I was very impressed with this 300 watt system, to be perfectly honest. It functioned very well for what we asked of it. We, um, we weren't running an inverter, so we weren't watching TV and doing things like that. So we ran lights and we ran the water pump quite a bit. Um, we've charged phones, but it was a, that was a three day, three night trip. And, um, you know, it didn't rain. So it was relatively sunny. One day was a little bit cloudy for a while and we were partially in the shade. So in the afternoon hours, the panels were actually in the shade. And, um, I'll be honest with you, every single morning that voltage, um, you know, had dropped down to somewhere in the neighborhood of like 12.1, just a hair over 12 volts. And, you know, by late afternoon, when we came back to the trailer and we were going to, we were going to start using lights and the pump and things like that, it, um, it was up anywhere from 13.4 to 13.6 volts. So we never once had an issue. We never run, once had dim or, you know, non-working anything. That battery voltage never dipped below 12 volts. And so in my book, that's a win. We're never going to rely on a three, a little 300 watt solar system to try to run mass quantities of stuff. Um, you know, inverters powering large, you know, large draw items. But for what I put this system on this trailer for and what my expectations were, it met and exceeded those expectations. We will be able to, to park off grid with no cord and no generator unless we want to run something excessive or the AC and be able to function, be able to take showers, to flush the toilet, to, to run water, to wash dishes, um, and to have all the lights on that we want, charge some phones up. That's all I'm asking for. And it delivered with flying colors. So appreciate you all watching. There's the update on the question of does it work? The answer, a resounding yes.